From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. So what does an idyllic campfire conversation from 150 years ago have to do with Yellowstone National Park? I'm John Shearer, and coming up, we'll go back in time to find out. Also from Yellowstone, did you know there's a part of the park where you might be able to get away with murder? What a law professor says <laughs> about that notion and what he says needs to happen also just ahead. I wouldn't recommend it, however. <laughs> 6.30 on this Tuesday, uh, March 1st, Yellowstone's uh, 150th birthday. Happy uh, birthday. Yeah. One of my favorite places uh, on the planet. Yeah, I know you and I both try to get there a few times a year. Absolutely yep. true. Take the families out there. Uh, it's th like spring out there right now. It is. It's almost... <laughs> Only 19 days and we'll be right. talking spring for real, but yeah. this is the faux spring. Faux, faux spring, faux that's, spring. that's yeah. good. That's good. Uh, temperatures this morning <laughs> into the 40s, even some 50s being reported across the area. A chance of a few spotty showers uh, for the first part of the day and then clearing for the afternoon. Our daytime highs are going to ramp up back into the 50s again today. Uh, decent amount of wind, that's really driving these temperatures for the afternoon right up to that 50 degree mark. We'll talk more about a big cool down trying to work its way in by the end of the week. That's coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Matt. 630. Today marks the 150th anniversary of the founding of Yellowstone as the world's first national park. American novelist Wallace Stegner called the U.S. national park system America's best idea. Filmmaker Ken Burns helped make the quote famous in his film on the national parks. But do you know who first came up with the idea of a national park? MTN's John Shearer explains. It's a compelling tale. In 1870, a group of explorers who were gathered around a campfire near the junction of the Firehole and Gibbon Rivers are so moved by what they've seen in the Yellowstone region that they propose preserving it as a national park. What a truly American story. In fact, it's such a great story that the Park Service used to share it all the way through the 1960s. The only problem? It's just not true. So, you know, there's kind of a myth that they sat around a campfire and they said, hey, let's preserve this as a national park and um, went on their merry way. Historian Lee Whittlesey reviewed 20 firsthand accounts left by members of that Washburn expedition into Yellowstone. Only four left diary entries for the night when the campfire story is supposed to have happened. None of them mentioned the discussion or the idea. In fact, it wasn't until 35 years later that Yellowstone Explorer and the park's first superintendent, Philetus Norris, described the campfire story attributing the idea to Cornelius Hedges. Now, that's not to say that Norris and others on the trip didn't embrace the idea of a national park that would eventually lead to creation of Yellowstone and this famous arch. It's just that the thought did not spring up around a nostalgic campfire in the center of Yellowstone. I think that they did have some discussions about what it would look like to maybe not leave this open to settlement, um, but it was kind of a over time, over the following year um, that those men really kind of evolved their thinking about this. It took some time for the national park idea to bubble up. During the year after the expedition returned to Helena, more than 15 articles and letters appeared and none even mentioned the great idea expedition members supposedly pledged to champion as they sat around the campfire. But once the idea did surface and was promoted by Norris, Hedges, and the others, it raced through the national consciousness like a wildfire in the West. Less than two years later, in 1872, President Ulysses S. Grant signed the law creating the park. In Mammoth, at Yellowstone National Park, I'm John Shearer, MTN News. 634 now, there's renewed interest to fix a legal loophole that centers around a 50 square mile sliver of land in Yellowstone National Park, where presumably a person could get away with murder. Only problem is, for decades, the issue sat dormant just waiting for someone to test the theory. As MTN's Andrea Lutz reports, that's exactly what some don't want to happen, so they're hoping Congress will step in and act. 
It is referred to as the zone of death in Yellowstone National Park. It's a little slice of remote backcountry heaven where perhaps only the bears and other wildlife roam. But given the right circumstances, perhaps someone could try and commit a crime there without the proper legal backing to actually convict them. And there's a continued push to fix that legal loophole before someone tries to get away with murder. Most know Yellowstone National Park for its beauty and untouched nature. It's a place of wonder, attracting many every year. But its boundaries and how they're drawn, peculiar considering this. It would be horrifying, horrifying if someone committed a crime thinking that this would work. 17 years ago, Michigan law professor Brian Colt stumbled upon a jurisdictional loophole that could in theory allow the federal government to dismiss charges against someone who committed a crime in the Idaho portion of the park. The second part of the loophole is more complicated. And here's why. The zone of death is centered around this tiny section of Yellowstone National Park. It's in the extreme southwest part of Yellowstone. Most of the park sits in Wyoming, roughly 9% in Montana, and this 1% in Idaho. When the park was created in 1872, none of its adjoining states were yet established. So Congress ended up putting the entire park in the hands of the District of Wyoming. Well, the Sixth Amendment requires a jury be drawn from the state and district where the crime took place. But if a crime was committed here in Idaho, there's no jury pool. No one lives there. Because of the way Congress drew the district lines all weird here, there's no way to get a proper jury. That's ridiculous, but uh, and it will be easy to fix. But until they do, it's it sits there as at least potentially an argument uh, that someone who commits a crime there would would have to go free. To our knowledge, the theory hasn't yet been tested. Uh, the horrifying thing would be for people to actually put theory into practice. Colt hopes his discovery of this legal loophole won't actually incentivize people to test it out. Let's hope that they fix it, that they close the loophole, but if they don't, let's hope that that streak continues. But he says it's gonna take a bigger movement than just his article to do so. Enter the Idaho House of Representatives, where during this session, a Boise lawmaker introduced legislation to close the loophole on the zone of death. I asked Congress to fix it. I've been asking them to fix it for 17 years. They don't pay any attention to me, but if Idaho asked them to do it, that might actually get us somewhere. But before you head to this remote area of Yellowstone with your worst enemy, Colt says not so fast. There are some exceptions where even federal law won't protect you. It doesn't apply to civil liability. So anything you do, uh, you could still get sued for. Uh, if you kill someone and then dump the body there, they'll charge you for killing them where you killed them, not uh, where you dumped the body. Adventure seekers often find themselves searching for the places virtually untouched by civilization. Probably the least visited part of the park. Just a little 50 square mile slice of heaven, some trails, that's it. Because there just aren't that many people there. But in the off chance, criminals are looking for it too. The concern is um, that someone would rely on this theory and commit a crime, whether they get away with it or not cult hopes change can happen before anyone tries to actually test the legal theory. There's a lot of interesting theories that people have had about how to get away with murder. This is just one of them, um, and, and it's not even a particularly effective one. Better to fix it. There's no reason not to fix it. In Billings, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. All right, 639, uh, time for a break. When we come back, more people than ever visited Yellowstone National Park last year. At 648, learn about ways to keep those crowds under control without having to put limits on the number of people who can get in each day.
Ahead on 